Hi, Brian Crabtree with a big time real estate question. Are we facing another housing crash in the near future? Well, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, said something that uh, got people talking here recently, that a crash like the one we saw in 2008 is lurking on the horizon for the United States. But what does that mean? He didn't commit to a time, and I'm not going to either, but I'll explain where the housing market is right now. It looks like 2006 all over again. So that's gotta be pretty exciting for buyers and sellers, investors alike. You can buy, you can sell, there's a fluid environment, record sales numbers of the last decade occurring right now, interest rates still attractive, although up about 1%. There's an inventory crunch, meaning there's more demand than there are homes for sale, but there's something happening in certain price ranges. It's softening. I've been talking to some of the top agents in the country, colleagues of mine, and they've been telling me that in different markets, I hate to put a number to it, but let's say Metro Atlanta as an example, where the average home price is three, four $400,000, and those numbers above three or $400,000 are starting to soften. That's what we saw in 2007 and eight, maybe some in 2006, but you don't notice it in the overall numbers. There's an inventory crunch. There's a lot of good things going on in the housing business. So are we facing another crash? Well, not imminent, but it's going to happen. It's almost like saying that, that you're going to get born and die. That's a pretty easy thing to predict. There's going to be an up and a down to every single market that has anything to do with finances, and housing is one of them. But this isn't about making a statement about the obvious. This is about making a statement about the 18-year cycle that makes up the housing market. The housing market generally runs in about 15 to 20 year cycles, averaging out at about 18. It climbs for about nine years of that cycle, and it declines or sits in sort of the doldrums with no appreciation during the other nine years of that cycle. We are roughly on the end of the up cycle. Maybe we've got a couple of years left, three years at most. Could be right now that it's ending. After that happens, you spend about six to 12 months where people are trying to figure out why things aren't selling as fast. Yet some indicators in the market are still very positive. I believe we're beginning to get there again, like we were in 2006. The big year was 2005. 2006, we started to see softening, but the overall conditions were incredible. 2007, we knew something was wrong. We just had no idea how bad it was. That would mean that 2019 is the year where you probably need to be really paying attention to your housing values, your investment, and your purchasing decisions. If you need to sell in the next two to five years, you're going to have to sell now to get the most money or be willing to potentially take yet less two years from now. If you can hold out five to 10 years, it's always best to look at real estate and the US economy as a bellwether in, on earth, because if it goes down again, it will go back up. Don't freak out. I don't think this particular looming issue will be anything like 2008. We have good credit standards, but we are seeing a spike up in foreclosures. We're also seeing some conditions where things seem to be getting to capacity again in commercial real estate leasing and demand and investment inventory, where prices are going up in some segments of the market, in Metro Atlanta and other markets across the country, at an unhealthy pace. And home price affordability is declining rapidly. What this means is with an increase in interest rates, a increase in price, as we've seen substantially over the last decade since the crash occurred and then the recovery, we're starting to see people having a difficult time qualifying or being able to really afford a home mortgage. Remember, you can borrow up to about 50% of your income to buy a home. That doesn't mean you should. Affordability really starts to decline precipitously after you spend about a quarter of your income. So while you can get qualified for up to 50% with great credit of your income in a mortgage payment, it's best to stay in the one quarter range. And we've seen those numbers creeping up as of late. As economic conditions change, people who are in the 40 to 50% debt to income ratio are at big risk to the structural integrity of the housing economy and the market. We're starting to see lenders loosen just a little bit. None of this is existential as it was in 2006, seven and eight, but it will contribute to some other economic event which will push the market down at least by a few percentage points over the next couple to three years. Not necessarily over the next couple of three years, I should say at some point in that range, we'll start to see that happen. Uh, if you have a home to sell, you either need to be on a five to 10 year horizon, 
or you need to sell more quickly because the market right now needs inventory. And it's always been said, and it's very good, it's in fact the most insulating real estate advice you'll ever hear right now. Buy when the market needs buyers. That means when nobody's buying because everybody's afraid, that's when you buy. That is not right now. Sell when the market needs sellers. That is definitely right now. And we've got another year, maybe two, of those conditions remaining with those lessening over that time. That's my opinion, and I've been pretty, pretty darn accurate on all of this since 2006. Not necessarily predicting the gravity of the crash, but predicting nonetheless that something was going to happen. I'm predicting again over the next couple of years something will start to happen. And if you can weather it out for the midterm horizon of five to ten years, you'll be in great shape. If you need to get out sooner, get out now. If you're buying, just be cautious. Remember, interest rates are going to go up. And if the market goes down a little bit, but you're paying a substantially higher interest rate, doesn't necessarily mean you've saved any money. You're just paying it out in interest over time. So you have to calculate these things with an expert like our team in Metro Atlanta or an expert we'll put you with anywhere across the country that will do a great job of helping you determine what's best for your individual situation, not what's best for their pocket in terms of commission. For that, go to therealestateexperts.com and reach out to me. It's very easy right there on the Contact Us page. You can check out our podcast, our audio, selling tab, buying tab. It's all there. And follow the content all the time at talk40.com. New book coming out, my talk40.com uh, viewers, listeners, podcasters, readers, whatever, they get 30% off the book, The Trump in You. It's coming out soon, and I hope you'll pick up a copy on Amazon. We have an exclusive with them for the first 90 days, and we'll offer you a discount because you're a regular consumer of our content already. That's our way of saying thank you. Hope you'll read it. It's a great book to help you explain uh, or understand the political landscape that's happening right now. And it's also a great book to help you understand how to apply some of the techniques that brought the Trump presidency, the success of winning the election to your own business, personal, and financial life. It's not really a political book, although politi politics is a big part of it. It's more about helping you be the best you you can be and applying some of the standards I've used to be one of the most successful real estate and media talents in the Southeast over the last two decades. The Trump in you, talk40.com, and therealestateexperts.com everything real estate. Thanks for watching.